in in this video i am going to discuss similarity transformation and conjugate classes in a group suppose g is a point group g it has symmetry operators identity then r2 r3 etc up to r8 r1 the symbol r1 for a symmetry operator is reserved for this identity because identity must be there in a group g point group g now take any symmetry operator from this list say rp and using any other symmetry operator say ri carry out a symmetry multiplication ri in ri on this side and i inverse on this side you can do it in the reverse way also if by carrying out this symmetry multiplication the result is found to be say r q then what do we expect we expect that this r p and r q should be either the same or of the of the similar of a similar nature because uh, because suppose uh, here we have some initial configuration of an object then we are applying ri on that configuration getting a result then applying uh, rp operation on that result we get a second result and finally we apply ri inverse of this operation ri inverse on that configuration the result is found to be some operator rq operated on the initial configuration that is if your configuration is like this you are applying ri first then rp then the inverse of ri and you find that you find a new configuration which is equivalent to rq rq on the initial configuration Uh, this is the meaning of uh, this symmetry multiplication now this rq must belong to this list because of closure property because multiplication of any two operators must be a result uh, which belongs to the group due to closure property so rq also belongs to g uh, if this happens then what is the relation between this rp and rq we are applying ri and they get, then again applying the inverse of it as if ri uh, the effect of ri is nullified by ri inverse therefore we expect that the result should be rp itself rq should be equal to uh, rq these two should be the same or if they are not the same then these two should at least be uh, similar to one another this is why this uh, this type of transformation from rp to rq is called a similarity transformation similarity transformation and rq and rp are said to be similarity transform of one another or conjugate to one another rp and rq are conjugate to one another or similarity transform of one another if such a relation holds let us now consider actual examples let us consider the symmetry multiplication table of 
C three V point group. This is the multiplication table. I explained the the construction of this table in one of my earlier videos with chloroform molecule as example. You may take chloroform, ammonia, or any molecule which belongs to this C three B point group. You will get this uh, this symmetry multiplication table. Now, from this list of symmetry, these are the first operations and these are the second operations. And the green part is the result of symmetry multiplication. Now, consider any operation, say sigma v one. Consider any operator sigma v one from this list. Now, carry out similarity transformation on this operator. Uh, by with the help of other operators suppose you take c3 on this side and c3 inverse on this side what will be the result result c3 followed by sigma v1 c3 first then sigma v1 is sigma v2 c3 first and then sigma v1 is Sigma v two. Therefore, we write for this part we write sigma v two operator. And C three inverse is left. What is C three inverse? C three inverse. We we note that C three square multiplied by C three gives you identity. Therefore, C three square is the inverse of C three. So for C, this C three inverse, we write C three square. Then. What is the result of this multiplication? Sigma v two first, and then c three square. See, sigma v two first, and then c three square. We get sigma v three here. Therefore, the result is sigma v three. So, sigma v one and sigma v three are conjugate. Carry out further, further. Uh, Similarity transformation using C three square operator. On the same sigma v one, we are carrying out similarity transformation using C three square operator. Inverse of C three square on this side and C three square on this side. What will be the result? C three inverse of C three square is C three. Then sigma v one, and here c three square. Now from the table we find that c three square, c three square first, followed by sigma v one, c three square, then sigma v one, gives you sigma v three, sigma v three. Therefore, this part is sigma v three. So this line will be c three. And then sigma v three c three square. Then sigma v one is sigma v three. And what is this result? Sigma v three followed by c three. Sigma v three followed by c three is sigma v two. Sigma v two. So we now find that sigma v one and sigma v two are conjugate. Here we find sigma v three and sigma v one are conjugate. That is similar. And if you go on in this way, suppose you you are carrying out sigma v one with the identity of it. This is although this is trivial, but uh, this is useful. This will give give you sigma v one itself, because e into this is this. This multiplied by e inverse is e itself. So, yeah, and this has to be so. Sigma v one must be similar to sigma v one. Must be conjugate to sigma v one. Any operator is conjugate to itself. And thus, we find that these three operators are conjugate to. The three reflection operators are conjugate to one another. <clears throat> we 
we say that sigma v1, sigma v2, and sigma v3 forms a class by forms a conjugate class. Conjugate class in C3V in the point group C3V. Similarly, if you take C3, C3 operator and carry out similarity transformations with the help of the other operators. C sigma V1 and sigma V1 inverse. What is that? Sigma V inverse of sigma V1 is sigma V1 itself because sigma V1 square is identity. So this is sigma V1 then C3 then again sigma V one operator sigma v1 followed by c3 from this table sigma v1 followed by c3 sigma v1 followed by c3 is sigma v3 so this part is sigma v3 and here it is sigma v1 what is that sigma v3 followed by sigma v1, it is c3 square, it is c3 square, we see that c3 and c3 square are conjugate to one another. In this way, if you, if you carry out all the symmetry, symmetry transformation, similarity transformations, you will find that c3 and c3 square, these two operators form a conjugate class. And what about the identity operator E? If you have any operator R, R and inverse of that on the left side, what is the result? ER is R. So this is R inverse R and this is E. So E is conjugate to itself only. Whatever be your R, whatever be your or that is if it is either C3 or sigma V or anything. E transforms to itself only. E, e, is con e operator is conjugate to itself only. We say that E forms, e forms a, a conjugate class by itself. E forms a class by itself e forms a class phase. so this point group c3v has three conjugate classes one is the operator e which is a class by itself then the two rotation operators c3 and c3 square these two form a conjugate class and then the three reflection operators, sigma v1, sigma v2, sigma v3, the three reflection operators. There are three conjugate classes in all three classes in C3V. This number three is very important because we will find later that uh, that the number of possible irreducible representations of a group is equal to the number of conjugate classes. Here also we, we see that the operators in a conjugate class are similar in nature. For example, these two are both rotations about the same axis. These three are reflections, although on different planes, but they are reflection plane, reflection operators. They are similar. Uh, with this, I conclude uh, today. I will uh, I will explain more uh, about this in my uh, next videos. Uh, 
So let me finish here today. I thank you very much for watching the video.